How are you going? You know, I've collected two groups of people here on YouTube. On one hand, I have the people that enjoy seeing me make peaceful, wholesome videos involving Australian wildlife. And on the other hand, the people that love danger and excitement and are all silently hoping I hurt myself doing something stupid. Or actually, and the feet demographic as well. And I try to please all these people. But now, whenever I upload a video, let's say an animal video, I get a bunch of you saying, Hey, what's, what's happened to you, soy boy? You're trying to be family friendly? Where's the danger? And then, when I do a dangerous DIY video, I get, Do more animal videos, please. I love them. And then, feet requests on every video. So, today, I'm going to make a video so dangerous that if I did wear socks, it would knock them off, appealing to two groups of these people. Danger. Danger. Is it ping or is it pong? Is it table or is it tennis? If we genetically modify people to make them really, really small and then force them to play tennis on this table, is that classified as table tennis or normal tennis? Who knows? They're all good questions that one day I'll answer. And my whole life I've called the game in which this ball hits this table ping pong. But I recently had my world shook as this one guy at a party told me that it's not the correct name and that I'm actually a racist. And I'm pretty sure that's not true as I regularly eat Asian food. But just to be safe and not insult anyone, from now on in this video I will refer to it as table pong. Now, table pong is a pretty tame and undangerous game, unlike other sports, as it doesn't involve moving great distances, sprinting, jumping, doping, or slamming into each other at high speed. And some people are probably screaming at the screen right now, saying, how can you say that? Did you not see Ma Long in the 1976 Olympic Games when he beat Zoran Primorak with his signature roundhouse flip? And I haven't seen that. And even if I did, I don't care, because that's not how normal people play it. Normal people play it drunk, out of their minds. <laughs> And if you can still play a sport while smashed and it's still entertaining, then it's not really much of a sport. So that's why I've decided to make table pong dangerous. So dangerous that I might become the first person ever to die playing it. Uh, well, apparently this guy died at 116 when his kids hit a ping pong ball into his mouth. But that's just a spectator death, so it doesn't really count. So I've still got a chance to get into the record books. Okay, now this is how I'm going to do it. And this explanation might get a bit sciencey, so bear with me. Yes. Okay, over here. Yep. So basically, I'm going to. Uh, well, uh, that's that's not it's not really uh, this part. This part here will uh, um will up the, the bit up the bit up the top here. Uh, will, um, you try to try to get something like this way, like this, huh? Yeah, a bit like down. Uh, yeah. uh, uh. All right, this isn't going to work out. This is the this is the diagram he drew earlier before he got on the bottle. So how it works is I'm going to pull a vacuum out of this tube, which contains a ping pong ball. And then I burst a thin seal on one side, which causes the outside air to rush in, pushing the ball down the pipe and out the other end at very dangerous speeds. It's pretty sick that the only thing forcing the ball out of the tube is atmospheric pressure. I never really think about how much air we actually have stacked on top of us, pushing us down at all times. And if my Googling is correct, it's about 1,000 kilos. And for you American Imperial folk, that's the weight of around 2,000 RB Meat Mountain sandwiches, or 300 AR-15 rifles, or 200 homeless men that are about to die from a lack of healthcare. And no one really gives these homeless men much credit and recognizes their importance, but that needs to change. As without these 200 men pushing down on us at every moment, every person in the world would simply swell up, explode, and then float away in a cloud of mush. Ah, thanks guys. So this is my first attempt of making the device. And I thought I'd get creative and fancy and add some screw cap things with an o-ring on the end to get a perfect seal. But this actually did the opposite and the screwing motion actually screwed me up. 
And look, the seal moves around inside when I'm trying to screw. And I just couldn't get a good seal. So instead, I kept it simple and just got a PVC pipe, placed foil on the end, and then put these end caps on, and then sucked out all of the air. And you might be wondering why I went for a length of pipe only a meter long, as a longer pipe would result in faster ball speeds. But I've got a very good reason. And that's because this seems to be the maximum length of pipe I can get from the store for free. Anything longer, and people start to get suspicious. And now... Sorry, I'm in. And it definitely pops, which is nice but not when I want it to. It always seems to burst prematurely. And at first I didn't mind that much, but after a while, it really started to affect my emotional, mental, and physical well-being. <laughs> and I've tried many things like tape, medication, sandpapering the surface until there were no bumps left, and even counseling, but nothing worked. Until finally, I found the solution. More layers. And now the foil pops on cue every time. So to help us idiots visualize how the air rushes into the empty tube, I've placed this miscellaneous white substance near the entrance. And that is good stuff. So let's play some Pong Ball. First up, let's see how much damage it does to a bat. Oi, 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 that's, that's dangerous. That's Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. And that's pretty disappointing. Now, even though it's traveling at something like 600 kilometers per hour, it still doesn't do very much to the bat. So we're going to need more than just atmospheric pressure. And I've come up with an idea which should fix that, which is copying exactly what the Mythbusters did. So I just kind of borrowed some more stuff from the store and put it together. So this is what we have now, a vacuum chamber containing the ball, and then this pressurized chamber here, which some of you may recognize from my tampon launcher and tree launcher video. And now instead of bursting it with a hammer, I'll pump this up to around 150 PSI and then open the solenoid valve here, hopefully resulting in 10 times more pressure than the atmosphere, pushing the ball out at supersonic speeds. And you might be wondering why I used a right angle connector here. Is it because it was the first piece I found that also fits in my shoe? No. It's because I want this device to be versatile, allowing you to play table pong from around corners. And I have no way to test its actual speed. Hopefully we'll hear like a supersonic crack or something. And if we don't, I'll just add one in while editing. And first test with pressurized chamber. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. That was weak. That was very weak. That was... Pull this put just fine. So, that's weird because when I did it before, it was stronger. And ignore that sonic boom, as it actually seems a lot weaker than without the pressurized chamber. And I think the reason is that the solenoid valve is not opening fast enough. And I'm regretting getting scientific advice from that baby, so I'm going to scrap the tampon gun and make a new pressure chamber. So, new plan. Instead of the solenoid valve, we have a burst disc. And then, I also decided to become a fancy man and design and 3D print this little converging diverging nozzle. this nozzle is meant to make air travel faster, but I don't really understand how or what I'm doing. So I'm kind of just gonna shove it into this pipe here so the air has no choice but to travel through it and hope it does what I want.
And that was loud, so loud that it felt like the air hit me in the face, and the ball went straight through the bat and blew out the back. And I'm happy. This is what I wanted to see. That nozzle is doing wonders to the airspeed. Now you might be wondering why it got a bit spooky and dark in my garage. And that's because I closed the door as I didn't want my neighbours to hear the constant explosions, get suspicious, and then call the coppers. So now that we have some more privacy, let's shoot some stuff. Like a soccer ball. And I think the ping pong ball broke up before exiting on this one, shooting out supersonic shrapnel, cutting a deep circle into the melon. And I was planning to attempt hitting the ball and playing some ping pong, but after seeing the amount of damage and shrapnel this creates, I don't want to be anywhere near the backside of this. But because I know we all want to see what would happen if I did stand in front of it, I'm going to shoot this big delicious thick piece of pork belly, which I'm choosing to blow apart instead of feeding my family or the homeless. That's pretty insane. Whoa! Okay, and after seeing this amount of damage, I've changed my mind. Let's do it. One man with a very long stick playing supersonic ping pong. Yep, go! Whoa! Whoa! Did you feel that? Yeah, I did. Boy, yeah. chipped all the wood as well. That is crazy speeds. I think the ball's still vaporized when it comes through, because why would there be a chip there if it wasn't? Mm. So it must kind of just come in and as one big kind of shrapnel cloud. Does this count as playing supersonic ping pong? No. Was my title clickbait? Yeah. But ignoring that, this is how you properly shoot a ping pong ball. Thai dancers, take note. And speaking of people selling out and doing questionable things for money, today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. Now most of you probably know what the internet is. In fact, unless you're tuning into me via AM radio or newsletter, you're using the internet right now. Wow. And the internet might sound like fun with its games and its boobs, but it's actually a pretty scary place, as everywhere you go on the internet, you leave little crumbs behind, allowing others to watch you and potentially steal your personal information. Whether that be your hacker neighbor that's gotten into your Wi-Fi, the American government who will falsely imprison you on terrorism charges, or even just your internet service provider that wants to sell your data to advertisers. Now, I don't want anyone selling your data for money besides me which is why you need ExpressVPN, as it ensures your safety by encrypting all your data and hiding your location. But Mr. Ida, how does ExpressVPN work? Well, ExpressVPN works by placing all of your data going in and out in a secure encrypted tunnel, which no matter how hard you look, cannot be seen by anyone. And I personally use ExpressVPN to gain access to Netflix in other countries, and also for changing my location in order to confuse the NSA agent who is watching me right now. So sign up today, take back your internet privacy and find out how you can get three months free at expressvpn.com slash I did a thing. 